mountains, desert, and scorching sun. No army could reign over the mysterious and colossal lands of Afghanistan, a nation that has tenaciously defied dozens of conquest attempts throughout the centuries. In this episode, we will briefly review its entire history, but we will focus our gaze on the 20th century. During this period, the Soviet Union, with its expansionist aspirations, sought to venture into this impenetrable country, unleashing a conflict that would leave an indelible mark on the territory and on world memory. Welcome once again to Military History. First and foremost, let's delve into the enigmatic land of Afghanistan. We are talking about a nation whose history is woven with resistance and seemingly unbreakable invulnerability. Since the beginning of time, it has defied each and every attempt at occupation by the most powerful nations on the globe, rightly earning the title of the Graveyard of Empires. Local testimonies often warn that the enemy always tries to hide a serpent's egg in their lands, even when defeated. Nos alegramos cuando el enemigo ruso se retiró de Afganistán. Sin embargo, sabíamos que el enemigo interno, el gobierno de Nayib, aún estaba ahí, dice este exguerrillero Mujahideen. Cuando los rusos se retiraron de Afganistán pensamos que lograríamos la estabilidad, pero nos equivocamos. Los países vecinos tienen intereses aquí y eso nos lleva a más inestabilidad. It is impossible for the key question not to arise in the various scenarios of invasion, so diverse, yet always yielding the same outcome. How has Afghanistan managed to stand firm against the waves of conquerors and global powers? Let's try to answer this question by describing and reflecting on the characteristics of this fascinating territory. Geographically, Afghanistan emerges as a challenging and strategic zone. Its mountainous topography, with ranges like the Hindu Kush, provides a formidable backdrop of organic protection that has deterred many ambitious invaders throughout history. The difficulties in devising and executing any form of mobilization plan, as well as the lack of easy access routes, have turned this country into a natural fortress, often deemed impenetrable. The racial and cultural melting pot characterizing the Afghan people has also been a key component of their resistance. The diversity of tribes and ethnic groups has forged a powerful national identity that clings to autonomy and the preservation of traditions, while also providing a range of battle and resistance tools, turning differences into a solid defense. Let's briefly review the history of the Afghan army. Persians, Arabs, Turks, and Mongols have contributed their characteristics to the formation of these militias, as varied as they are powerful, which bring to life the Afghan armed forces. From Pashtuns to Tajiks, each ethnicity provides a unique ingredient that translates into a weapon or tool for battle. Its military structure, a tapestry of specialized units, adapts to the aforementioned topography of Afghanistan. It is characterized by being a versatile army since, having faced invasions and internal conflicts, it is capable of continuously reshaping its organization to confront a constantly changing reality. The arsenal of the Afghan forces reflects regional influences and the need to confront diverse threats, from the robust Kalashnikov rifle to asymmetrical warfare and guerrilla tactics. Their weaponry and strategies tell the story of a nation that has resisted the onslaughts of history. Afghan combat customs are a testimony to the rich cultural heritage. Hospitality on the battlefield, the importance of loyalty and respect for honor are cornerstones that define the military ethos. Let's see invaluable 20th century footage of their soldiers marching through the desert. The Afghan communities have shown unwavering loyalty to their land, resisting even in unfavorable situations and being willing to sacrifice their lives to preserve their territory against a potential occupier. Afghanistan's history is marked by a succession of thwarted invasions, with some standing out above the rest. In the 4th century BCE, 
the titanic Alexander the Great, whose ambition knew no bounds, embarked on the conquest of the vast Afghan territory. However, he faced fierce resistance from local tribes and astonishing geographical difficulties, turning his endeavor into a colossal task. Although he established some settlements, total occupation slipped from his grasp, and the territory remained an independent entity. Many years later, during the era of the British Empire in the 19th century, Afghanistan emerged as a crucial strategic point. The British, eager to expand their commercial and political influence in Central Asia, encountered two failed attempts to control the region. The British imperial machinery, pursuing the balance of power in the region and challenging the looming shadow of Russia, embarked on what seemed like a simple campaign, but soon turned into a fierce conflict. The Afghan tribes, staunch guardians of their independence, rose against foreign occupation. Men and women, under the banner of charismatic leaders like Mohammed Akbar, displayed courage against the imperial advance. The theater of operations unfolded in dramatic settings, from the arid plains in the north of the country to the imposing heights of the Hindu Kush mountain range. Legendary battles like Kabul and Gandamak became epics where local tactical cunning clashed with British ferocity in a deadly dance. The brutality of the conflict was not only evident on the battlefields, but also in the tragic deaths of thousands of British and Afghan individuals caught in the whirlwind of war. The British retreat from Kabul, shrouded in defeat and suffering, sealed one of the darkest events of the invasion. The Anglo-Afghan conflicts that occurred between 1839 and 1842 first, and between 1878 and 1880 later, left the historical invaders with bitter lessons about the unyielding resistance of the Afghans and the intricate complexity of subduing this land. But this desert nation would not be spared from further onslaughts. In the 20th century, the Soviet Union sought to expand its political and territorial influence in Afghanistan, initiating one of the most prominent conflicts of the Cold War period which we will discuss in greater detail later in this video. Continuing the chronological journey, the 1990s saw the terrible rise of the Taliban regime in the country, triggering a new series of bloody conflicts and devastating challenges for the nation. The Asian nation experienced a period of chaos following the Soviet withdrawal and the subsequent civil war. In this context, the Taliban, primarily composed of religious students, emerged as a force promising stability. Under the charismatic leadership of Mullah Muhammad Omar, these fundamentalists seized Kabul in 1996, establishing the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan and implementing a strict interpretation of Islamic law. Let's see impressive footage of the internal confrontation the eastern country was enduring. Although initially viewed by some as a means to end the conflict, the Islamic members soon faced international condemnation for their repressive policies, especially concerning human rights, particularly those of women. During their rule, they provided refuge to Osama bin Laden, then leader of Al-Qaeda, sparking tensions worldwide. In 2001, following the September 11 attacks, the United States led a military intervention that ousted the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. However, the group has maintained a persistent presence and, in recent years, has regained some territories in Afghanistan. The rise of Islamic fundamentalists marked a dark period in Afghan history, with significant repercussions at both national and international levels. The consequences of this history of religious and ethnic conflict include the immeasurable loss of human lives, the destruction of hundreds of local communities, and a series of profound scars in the social fabric of a people who believe they are destined to withstand the onslaughts of major powers. These offensives by the powerful countries of the world have no objective other than to seize control of a territory 
extremely rich in what is known as black gold. Yes, just as you imagine, we're talking about oil. It is estimated that this resilient Asian country has reserves of this fossil fuel, totaling approximately 1.9 billion barrels. For any of the dominant nations, owning this territory would mean a differential that could position them at the forefront of global conflicts. This is one of the main reasons why its lands are so coveted and suffer constant attempts at occupation by countries seeking to expand their global power. Obviously, we are examining how this country has resisted foreign occupations, but we must also acknowledge that it has experienced internal problems. Let's keep in mind that this nation has suffered brutal dictatorships and violent caliphates, which would deserve their own separate video. Let's now turn to the topic at the center of this video, which features the Afghan country and one of the most important nations of the 20th century. The stage was set. The impressive tensions of the Cold War, ideological struggles and global geopolitics converge in Afghanistan. How and why did the Soviet Union, with its imposing military machinery, venture into this intricate terrain? How did this confrontation unfold, which, although political in its essence, had impactful military consequences? How many lives were affected by this conflict that was a watershed moment in Afghan history? Let's try together to answer these fascinating questions. This crucial chapter in contemporary history left 10 years of failed Soviet occupation in Afghanistan and reshaped the global geopolitical balance. The USSR's decision to intervene in the country in 1979 was motivated by various reasons. Firstly, it sought to stabilize the Afghan communist government led by Nur Muhammad Taraki, which faced growing opposition and internal struggles within the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan. Political fragility and sectarian tensions threatened to generate various conflicts in the region, which could affect Soviet interests. Additionally, Moscow aimed to consolidate its leading influence in Central Asia, ensuring a sympathetic government in a strategically located country Afghanistan's proximity to the Central Asian republics and the possibility of establishing a significant military presence were key factors in the Soviet decision. The military intervention by the USSR officially began on December 24, 1979, with the arrival of troops and the installation of a new pro-Soviet government led by Babrak Karmal. However, this action sparked fierce resistance from various Afghan groups who unified under the banner of the Mujahideen, embracing a mix of nationalism, religious fervor, and anti-communist resistance. Afghanistan's mountainous geography, as we have described, along with the guerrilla tactics adopted by these warriors, presented a significant challenge for the occupying forces. This conflict, known as the Soviet-Afghan War, lasted for almost a decade, becoming one of the most prolonged and costly confrontations of the 20th century. The Soviet Union, using its formidable military machinery, sought to impose its influence in the region but encountered unyielding resistance. The Afghan Mujahideen, supported by the United States and other Western powers, became the backbone of the opposition. These endorsements from Western countries occurred because, internationally, the conflict in Afghanistan had become a focal point of the Cold War. Concerned about Soviet expansion, the United States and other nations provided significant financial and military support to the fighters in the eastern country. They were provided with modern weaponry, tactical and strategic training, as well as international support to defeat the Soviet Union at all costs. This indirect backing marked the beginning of a complex network of alliances and rivalries that would persist after the end of hostilities, forever sealing the relationship of this country with the United States and the rest of the European nations. 
Thanks to these endorsements and collaborations, Afghanistan became an extremely militarized state with state-of-the-art military equipment, a fact that the West would regret years later. In early 1989, the Soviet Union officially announced the decision to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan. This announcement came in the context of broader international relations changes, including political openness in the Soviet Union under the leadership of Mikhail Gorbachev and the easing of Cold War tensions. The Soviet withdrawal was seen by many as a significant milestone, not only in the Afghan conflict, but also in global dynamics. The process was complex and challenging. Russian forces who had arrived with the intention of establishing a pro-Soviet government in Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, left facing the hostility of the Afghan mountainous geography and constant harassment from the resistance. The return, in many ways, became a difficult and dangerous journey for the Russians, who were not accustomed to such a defeat. On February 15, 1989, the last column of Soviet troops crossed the Amu Darya Bridge, symbolically marking the end of another failed occupation of Afghan territory. Almost a decade of Soviet bloodshed and battle ended five minutes ahead of schedule as the Soviet army completed its retreat. The last combat soldier to leave, Commanding General Boris Gromov. He walked across the Friendship Bridge into the arms of his 15-year-old son. Although the Soviet withdrawal put an end to direct military occupation, it left a legacy of instability and internal conflicts that would continue to affect the country in the years to come. Internal strife persisted, leading to the rise of the Taliban, as explored earlier in the video. This renegade nation has not only expelled Hellenic or medieval empires. In the intricacies of the modern international stage, we can delve into the complexity of the United States' intervention in Afghanistan during the 21st century. We are talking about an episode that has signified a paradigm shift in contemporary history and has influenced the geopolitical future of the region. The American military deployment in Afghan territory in 2001 was conceived as a response to the devastating attacks of September of that same year. We are, of course, referring to the attack on the Towers. The U.S. administration, led at that time by George W. Bush, identified Afghanistan as the refuge of Osama bin Laden, leader of Al-Qaeda, who had claimed responsibility for the bloody aggression. Not only that, but the American government decided to label the Asian nation as a breeding ground for terrorist groups threatening global security. That was the starting point of the so-called War on Terror, which aimed primarily to dismantle these networks and stabilize the region under American control. Over the years, the military presence under the command of Bush, first and then in the administration of Barack Obama, became increasingly intertwined in a complex conflict. US and NATO forces were opposed, not only to insurgent groups like the Taliban, but also to the intricate tribal and political network in Afghanistan. The conflict and occupation lasted for 20 years. The withdrawal of U.S. troops in 2021 marked a significant event. Factors such as persistent violence, political complexity, and the inability to completely eradicate terrorist threats influenced the decision to end a long military intervention, which had seen more sorrows than glories. This milestone not only represented the closure of a chapter, but also left questions about the legacy and consequences of this endeavor. Let's watch one of the last squadrons withdrawing from the Asian country. The conclusion of the American military presence not only had repercussions at the national level, 
but also raised questions about global dynamics and the true role of the United States in the construction and maintenance of world peace, or rather, its failure in doing so. This latest withdrawal opened a new phase for Afghanistan, a country that, by this point, was marked not by decades, but by centuries of invasions. Today, it faces the monumental challenge of forging its own path towards political stability and eradicating local terrorist cells. In its pursuit of a more promising future, it leans on its history, a nation that proved to be a fortress of sand in a desert doomed to be invaded. Afghanistan, the graveyard of empires, is a country that owes its current sovereignty to the resilience of those who call this land their home. We are reaching the end of this installment. We look forward to reading your valuable comments and appreciate your participation. Thank you for staying until the end, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episodes of Military History.